Line of sight channels describes the case where you have a transmit antenna that transmit to receive antenna and they are seeing each other. And in this video we will characterize the channels and we will do it in the simple free space line of sight channel when there is no other objects around that can reflect or scatter the signals. So let's start with the SIMO channel case when we have a uniform linear array, which means that you have M antennas being put next to each other on a line and you have an antenna spacing that we call delta between each of the adjacent antennas. And then we can define for every antenna a distance to the transmitter. So D1 from the first receive antenna to the transmitter, D2 from the second to the transmitter, and dm from the nth antenna to the transmitter. We use the first antenna as a reference antenna and define phi as being the angle to the transmitter from that receive antenna. And we can also call the angle of arrival. And when phi is equal to zero, if we have a uniform linear array here, then the transmitter is located perpendicularly to it. And we call this the broadside direction. And when phi is equal to pi over 2 or minus pi over 2, then if you have a uniform linear array here, the transmitter is along that line as well. And we call that the end phi direction. Usually in wireless communication, the distance between the transmitter and receiver is much larger than the size of the array. So maybe we have a 100 meter propagation distance, but arrays that are smaller than the meter. And when this happens, the distance between transmitter and all of the receive antennas are approximately the same. We say that we are in a far field and that even if the waves that are sent out by transmitter is propagating as a sphere, when it reaches the receiver it's almost like a planar wavefront. So the channel gain to each of the antennas are approximately the same. However, when we sample the signals, we still have some small time delays and those things turn into phase differences. When using the first antenna as a reference antenna, we can compute the time or phase difference between it and the other antennas using this triangle that you see. And we have the phi angle showing up at different places and between antenna 1 and antenna m, we have a additional propagation distance of m minus 1 times delta times the sine of the phi angle. And sometimes this is a positive, sometimes it's a negative value. Based on this principle, we can compute the channel vector G in this line of sight SIMO case. We have G1 to Gm, and all of them have the same channel gain beta. So we have a square root of beta in front, and then for the first antenna we put a 1, for the second one we have a phase shift. Uh, so we have e to the power of minus j2 pi delta sinus of phi divided by lambda. And then for each of these additional antennas, we just multiply the phase shift here by 2, 3, and so on, up to m minus 1. What will then be the SIMO capacity in this case? Well, the important thing is that we have a g vector, which has a common channel gain beta, and then all of the different elements are different phase shift, but all of them have a magnitude that is equal to 1. So when we, in our capacity expression like this, have the squared norm of g, we only get m times beta out of that one. So we see that we have this beam forming gain, the SNR becomes proportional to the number of antennas. And then we have the beta, which is the channel gain of each of the individual antennas. And if we consider our MISO channels, we are transmitting now from the array to the same receiver. Well, then we can use the same G vector for that one and get the same capacity again. When we are sending the signal towards the receiver, we get the beam forming gain, which is proportional to the number of antennas. So we get this M times stronger SNR. And in the line of sight channel, we are forming a beam towards the angular direction of the user. So if there is someone else who is located at a similar angle, it will also see a beam form again. It will not be equal to m, but a smaller number. And the angular area where we see this type of amplification is called the beam width of the transmission. And here is an illustration of that. We have the beam form again in decibel scale. And we have 10 antennas, so 10 dB is the largest beam from again. And we are sending the signal to a user right in front of the array in the broadside direction. And then we can see for different angles what is the beam from again that, that replaces. And all the angles that are above this horizontal line is where we have an amplification compared to an isotropic transmitter. And we see that there is a main beam where that happens, and then there is some side lobes where we have ripples, but it's still no amplification that we are seeing there. The width of this main beam, if we are computing from the nulls of it, 
where it goes down to zero, that is roughly proportional to two divided with the number of antennas. So the more antennas we have, the more narrow it's going to be. So here is an example of that. When we are going from the blue curve with 10 antennas to the red curve, which is 20 antennas, we get a narrower main beam and we also get more amplification. And we also see that we have more ripples on the sides. So this is what happens when we are beamforming. We direct the signal more and more in a particular angular direction. Around it, there are some other directions where we also get some amplification, and then we get a lot of variations in other directions. But in general, people are getting less interference spreading out in other directions than with an isotropic transmitter. We can extend this concept to the MIMO case when we have multiple antennas at both the transmitter and the receiver. And if we are in the far field, we have approximately the same distance between all the transmit antennas and all the receive antennas in terms of computing the channel gains again. But we have different phase shifts. So if we're using the first antenna, the transmitter and the receiver as a reference antenna, we can compute the phase shift for the other antennas on their channels. And for example, between antenna K and antenna M, we have the same beta as the channel gain between all of them. Then we have e to the power of minus j, 2 pi. We have its distance minus a reference distance divided by lambda. And the reference distance can be between the first antennas in the two arrays. If you put this expression into every element in the channel matrix G, then we get this big matrix with a scaling factor in front, which being the channel gain. And then we have different phase shifts everywhere. And interestingly, we can separate into an outer product of two vectors. The first vector is the channel between all the receive antenna and the first transmit antenna. And the second vector is the channel between all the transmit antennas and the first receive antenna. And this means that the rank of the channel is just one, because we can write it as an outer product of two vectors. That means that when we compute the channel capacity, we only have one parallel subchannel, being when we are transmitted with maximum ratio transmission from the transmitter towards the first receive antenna and receive things with maximum ratio combining over all of the receive antennas. If we use our capacity expression from the previous video, since we only have one subchannel, we should put all the power there, the full Q. And then the singular value, S1 square, is going to be beta m times k. So we get the product of the number of transmit and receive antennas. So there is a beamforming gain, but there is no multiplexing gain because there is nothing in front of the logarithm. Even if there is no multiplexing gain, it's still better to have multiple antennas at both the transmitter and the receiver compared to only having it at one place. So say that we have 10 antennas in total. If you create the SIMA channel with nine receive antennas and one transmit antenna, you get the beamforming gain of nine. If you put five antennas on each side to create a MIMA channel, we get five times five, that's 25 as beamforming gain. So it's still very beneficial to have multiple antennas at both the transmitter and the receiver, even if in line of sight cases, we will get only a rank one channel. However, in cases that are non line of sight, we can still see a multiplexing gain. And that is what the next video was going to be about.